Hello and welcome to Insights from an Autistic. I'm Armand Kodai, a almost 24-year-old high-functioning individual with autism. Today's video I'm going to discuss friendship from childhood to currently for me and how hopefully you can apply this to your child if you're an individual with autism, how you can hopefully make friends. So the first thing is when I was little, um, my mom set up play dates with, with her uh, friend's daughter and and so I so she was my first friend and pretty much my only friend when it came to going to daycare or to preschool that sort of thing I I would actually sit and sometimes watch the kids play like on the playground equipment or playing like the ball pen whatever the case may be and I stayed away from them you know and actually what I was doing I was visualizing playing with them and sometimes just visualizing myself playing with the equipment I just really didn't feel a need to play with them and so a good way if you want your child at an early age if they're young to start socializing and I recommend you know joining an autism support group that has parents of younger children or trying to find a network through online with uh, parents of younger children try to set up play dates that's an excellent way I think with other individuals of autism the person that I my friend did not have autism as a matter of fact, my mom didn't even know I had autism at that time. As I got older through elementary school, I had one other friend, and he was my next door neighbor, so that's probably why we were friends. You know, like sometimes I'd just slam the door in his face, and, you know, if, like, if he wanted to play me and I didn't want to play, I just slam the door in his face, and I didn't see anything wrong with that. And, you know, we still stayed friends, so that was good. As I got older, say in middle school uh, years, this is how I saw, you know, I actually saw the people and I saw them talking and I was proud to be alone. I felt I was a better person because I felt like that they were shackled by the socialization that got going. I felt like it was a prison of sorts. And, and so, if I was forced to sit with people, like in middle school, you know, they the other people would be chatting away, and then be like, "Well, why aren't you talking?" And, you know, I'd, I'd be listening to a conversation, and, and it would have nothing to do with me. So I'm like, "Well, why? Why the heck would I even say anything?" You know, I didn't, I wouldn't see a reason to add anything to the conversation. I don't even necessarily know how to add something to the conversation. Even to this day, adding to a conversation when other people are talking, you know, it seems kind of rude to me or irrelevant, and, and it seems like no one's gonna remember three days from now, so why even bother? And, and that's how I felt about it then, and I kind of feel the same way now, but not to the same intensity. However, though, sometimes, let's say, one person would talk to me, and, you know, I'd feel, uh, I'd feel something, and then afterwards I'd feel a supreme loneliness. You know, I'd want that friendship, but yet, at the same time, I wouldn't want it. Of course, when I think people are in a group together just chit-chatting, you know, it doesn't really seem like friendship. It just seems like something that people do for the heck of it you know to me friendship is more of a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing you know sometimes with a group you know an intimate group but when it starts getting less less intimate you know with less more and more people or when the conversation you know just doesn't evolve you then then doesn't seem like a, a friendship of sorts you know you I, I have felt left out and you know and so for those of you in middle school my advice is is to is to maybe try to sit with those people who are not sitting with too many people to begin with and try talking to them because you know I, I, I can imagine you know, that it might be the similar way that you don't want to be with this large group of people are talking about some random stuff and you, all these things are going through I know I know it just for me it could be tense if um if I felt like if I had to get involved with that or something now in high school I, I started to make some friends actually. Actually, towards the end of middle school, that's when I really started to make friends. Uh, you can read my video, Concrete, not read, watch my video, Concrete Autism, as I discuss that in more detail in that video. Uh, I was still not likely to go up to people, but, you know, I just made some people, and, and they were like the one on one sort of things, you know. And. What really helped was taking an interpersonal communication course, and it talked to me about, you know, it taught me about going up to people trying to strike a, strike a conversation. So I started to do that. So I'd actually go up to people. I'd be the first one at, say, a social event through, like, the school or something to start going up, shaking people's hands, saying, hey, how are you? You know, get a couple of lines in, you know, maybe even talk 
to them for just a couple of seconds. And then, though, when they, people got together in their groups and, you know, their circle of friends, I then be my, by myself. So actually people would be like, wow, you're a very social person you now when, when, when everybody sees me going up to all these people. And then they're like, then they see me sheltered off from myself and all alone. They're like, man, you're very shy or why, why aren't you talking to people? So it was, I was a, a contradiction of sorts. You know, in, in the same day or at the same event, people would comment on how social I was and then they'd comment on how shy I was all at the same time. Or, you know, it would be different people too uh, commenting on it. So some people see me being social, some people see me being shy. So it's kind of interesting. And so for high school, uh, the, the biggest thing is just, you know, you can try going up to people. That, that's a challenge. I know it's a challenge. So, you know, just maybe try to find those people that, you know, or if you're a parent, try to get them involved in a support group that that has teenagers with uh, autism. I know that they're out there, especially in California where I live. Hopefully they're out there where you are too. Now today, I consider myself to have many acquaintances, but few friends. Now, a lot of people consider me to be friends, but to me, friendship is a very deep thing, and it's not just chit-chatting way, you know, I think it goes beyond that. You know, I occasionally hang out with people, but I'm often alone by my with myself. I often don't do things to people I know. I never go, I go to the movies alone. I don't really do social events, you know, I haven't really done anything exciting in a very long time. You know, occasionally I did, I did go to a convention, but usually I don't do those things. And it's extremely rare for me to, to do those. So I, I, I live, I'm pretty alone uh, by myself in that regard. Um, and, and in reality, while I do consider myself to be improving, and I do also see history repeating itself, I realize I still have much work to do on myself alone. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm, I still, you know, the groups of people or whatever it may be, you know, just, I don't know. And hopefully one of these states I'll get it mastered. That's that's my goal for myself is to be able to strike conversations, people be able to make friends more so than I have now, and to make a difference in other people's lives with autism or whose lives are touched by autism. So with that in mind, I just want to remind everyone that I do run a support group. It's in California. So if you have any questions about that, just give me a message and I shall give you the details for that. Thank you very much. I hope this video has been very helpful to you. And I wish you a most awesomest day of awesomeness. Thank you. Bye.